Luigi. And make sure you drop a Prime here if you can as well. All right. He was not kidding. We speed run the hell out of this. Let's go. <laughs> we are good to go. We want to see. We want to mm -hmm. see Jigglypuff. We want to see Min Min. And no better guys to do it. We saw up on the stage when he said base page was rocketed and crouching tiger. I yeah. think that, that's him trying to get in the zone, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely there is that pressure even when you're just at this at this point in the tournament, right? You want to keep the run going, but I, I do think, and I talked to him a little bit, he is feeling like he was set up to succeed, and now it is his time to kind of seize that. Yeah. That being said, I mean, Dora Migi has looked dominant throughout the Man, tournament. And it just is popping is off over there, yeah. <laughs> ready to go, and we're seeing an early four throw off stage. That's going to be a huge tool that uh, Base Mage is going to do to set up those early stocks against Dora Migi. Yeah, and he's got a really good way of, oh no. Yeah, like, see, this is the, yeah, this is so, so rough. Bad. Look at it. He's gone. He literally <laughs> fought through him and just drifted off the stage with a nair, and there was nothing he could do about it. Yeah, that's that's going to be like most of the matchup if Dormigi can't uh, hold middle stage as much as possible. Oh, no. Why like would you put yourself over here? This is so bad. Okay. If you get forward thrown as Min Min by Jigglypuff by the ledge, around 40%, you could be losing your stock. A really good rising nair, but... <laughs> Base Mage is able to stay down there. We are seeing a prime example right now of why this matchup is considered so challenging. Yeah, and I think, you know, Base Mage definitely saying, like, oh, I feel like this is, I made the seed. When you get, like, an 8-2 matchup right before top 8, like, yeah, bro. <laughs> like, you're supposed to you're supposed to succeed. And he's doing exactly that. 104 damage. Oh, that would have been a great uh, F smash with the Mega Watt. But, yeah, 104 damage, and he's still carrying off stage. Nice snap. Oh, All right, no. the fourth throw again at about 40%, but... The smash attack in the air gonna come out, send base mage across the stage. Not enough to kill him with a two stock lead. Dora Migi needs something huge right now. Ooh, okay, not even the up throw. Nice, though. Okay, nice. Super jump, yeah, super jump neutral air with the uh, megawatt. I'm just gonna be his best tool for getting a stock here. Whoa! That's crazy that you go down there voluntarily. Yeah, you're, you're a wild man. You're a wild <laughs> man for that one. I was not expecting him to go off the ledge and uh, without, you know, some type of game plan there, just drop the double nair. Does manage to get back to stage, but I mean, I think as Min, Min you definitely want to hold middle stage as much as possible. Yo, he's wow. fighting his way back though. Those nairs are so good, and Dora Migi is answering back <laughs> after losing two stocks almost immediately to base mage. The air dog goes punished with the clank on the arm, something we talked about at the start of this. So, so strong. Get him back to the ledge, <laughs> and the back throw will take the stock. Base mage visibly shook in the player cam right now. Yo, no, this is absolutely insane. I was not expecting what? to see the way he is fighting back. Neutral air with the dragon arm to get back again. Base mage. Oh, okay, yeah, so okay. base mage is adjusting. What Dora Miki is going, doing is okay. not DIing that correctly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what Dora Miki is doing is going low and coming up with a rising nair to mm -hmm. try and contest, contest whatever base mage is doing on the way down. Base Mage, we saw in that very last stock, adjusted to that a little bit by not falling as quickly. He didn't get the punish, but it shows us that he's recognizing what went wrong those last two stocks and he's trying to adjust a little bit. But I, I am beyond impressed with Dora Migi holding, <laughs> holding your mental after losing two stocks almost immediately, fighting back and honestly willingly going off stage multiple times against Jigglypuff to try and make something happen is just like... It's that young man energy. Oh, yeah, definitely <laughs> young man energy. I like the I like what he was trying to do though. Instead of going down there to challenge, he was trying to challenge the pull up. That's why he was just nearing right where the hand was uh, on the ledge. So if in the uh, uh, situation where if Dormigi pulled up the wrong way, he would have just got hit right back out and reset the situation. So a yeah, nice little adjustment there from uh, Base Mage. But either way, that game started to get a little close, bro. Like I feel like Dormigi <laughs> started to figure something out himself. So let's see if he can turn this into maybe a game or at least a, a, a much closer one. So those first two stocks, he got out absolutely eliminated in that first game, meaning he had to fight on the back foot the entire time. Yeah, and there are some things that Min Min has that are kind of decent in this matchup. Stuff like up smash and up tilt are great at catching Puff if she's right above you. Mm -hmm. But, I, I mean, it, it's situational at best. There is a reason that we talk about this as a, a really difficult matchup for Min Min. I like him trying to get that check, though, you know. Oh, oh no. Yeah, we're so And that low. one was... Uh, <laughs> is That's that a forced of... error? Unforced error? Uh, like, yeah. <laughs> He was just, uh, just trying to find the way to get back to the stage the best way possible. Yeah, again, it's covered by the wall wow. of... Okay, actually, still living that crazy. Uh, the wall of the Jake's Nair. It's going to be doing... All, it's going to be wreaking havoc every time we go off stage. Speaking of, off stage one more time. Uh, okay. There's so much. It feels like base knockback on that board. They're it is. sending you deep off stage at 18%. And it's like, the, the, like a very good angle, too. Yeah. <laughs> very low. Nice. Okay, nice. up air. Not what I expected, mm -hmm. I'll tell you that much. Not what I expected, but Dora Migi making it happen. 
going for some of the moves that actually don't use the arms as much because Base Mage can't clank with them as easily. So a little bit of an adjustment there. Like the yeah, seeing a lot more uh, you know up air, up tilt. Uh oh, get pushed oh, off the stage. No. This is yeah, this is where uses I'm... the jump. Nice air dodge and just the beats out the active insane. frames. That is an insane one to get back from. You had to guess right three times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, this could be big here too because uh, he's definitely really good at using the dragon arm laser as the last bit to kind of push you uh, a little. Uh, close to that oh, last that's a jump gone. Not... This should be it. Oh, nice yeah. air dodge. Oh, why? The tech is crazy. You could have just followed him. I don't even know if he was going to get close enough to actually get the up B uh, after that. You know what? I, I, I never have faith in Mimmin's tether. I think he's like one of the worst <laughs> tethers in the game, so he probably was close enough. But good tech right there from Dormigi and wow. find his way back to the stage one more time. And a lot of feints that Dora Media has been using off the ledge or with the upbeat, the grounded upbeat, have been catching base mage off guard. The timings right now are really, really good. Uh -oh. oh? Base mage? Oh, yeah. I think if without the fastball, I'm pretty sure he could have grabbed that, but it looks yeah. like he fastball that, uh, that air dodge, unfortunate. Dormigi is air dodging pretty predictably mm -hmm. off stage. I would like to see Base Mage just waiting a second. I know it's really scary because Dormigi is willing to swing on the way back. Right. But those air dodges have been pretty reliable and on zero to death. I'm on. I'm on commentary clapping because, like, honestly, bro, bro is playing some min min <laughs> to excellent uh, efficiency <laughs> right now. That was a very Good second game for him. I mean, the, the recoveries, he has to get tricky with it. As you said, he is getting a little obvious, but basically he has not uh, covered it yet, so he yeah, has no reason to I change. Mean, yeah, why not? Yeah. That is, that is crazy. And <laughs> every time we talked about it, <laughs> we were calling the matchup a little worse. We are like, ah, oh, it's like 60-40. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the first game happened, you're like, it's like 70-30. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then he wins the neutral, you're like, this is 80-20. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you, like, if, if he loses, I'm, I'm going to pop a 9-1 matchup. Oh, like. my God. 100-0, and Dormi has fought the odds. Oh. This is good. Yeah, this is a good set we got to develop in, though. Yeah, Dormi, I mean, obviously, jokes aside, though, he is going to be on the back of Osmosis, but he's doing a really good job of fighting this here Puff and keeping the uh, Mimin advantage state as long as possible. Yeah, oh, wait I a minute. Think how good he is at kind of that close quarters combat, it feels like, on the recovery is so insane, and it's base mage with an SD. Yeah, he air dodged to grab the ledge, but it was like, I don't know, that weird thing where you kind of bounce off the stage, so unfortunate for uh, four base mage, as that does put him down a stock, and I mean, the damage that is getting put wow. on right now. Oh, man, if he swapped arms to find the megawatt hit, I think that would have been it for sure. Okay, push wait, him off the stage. Oh, there it is! again! Dora Migi, the pressure is absolutely relentless and recognizing now when Base Mage has used resources offstage, perfectly switching between, between the Ram Ram and the Megawatt for the optimal punish and is making this matchup look simple. Uh oh, yeah, probably not going to make that back though. You right, saw the air dodge come out. What can simple. you do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jake's going to get out there. Making it look winnable. Yeah. <laughs> It is honestly insane how reliably Dorimiki is finding those like Ram Ram uh, Dragon Arm mm -hmm. in the air, right? That's something you often see on the ground or like as a landing option, yeah. but Dorimiki is really reliably finding those as an anti-air, which kind of mitigates that situation we were talking about, that 45 degree angle Puff likes to come at, but that should be the stock and now a reverse of that first game where Base Mage was on the back foot and is making this comeback. Wait, okay. This is bad. This, yeah, this is... That's damage. Okay, nice roll. He's oh, I'm trying to find God. some space. I need space, please. <laughs> Running away from this pink demon. <laughs> oh no. Okay, what? hold up. No way. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah, the, the sparks got me. I was like, there's no way all the way from across the screen. But Dormigi, yeah, is this oh, relentlessly this is trying to find some space? Is that gonna work? Okay. Oh my god, he lives again. The sparks lying to us consistently. The air dodge comes out from base mage. That resource is gone. We'll get back to the ledge, but the double roll in is punished. No. Uh oh. Dormigi, yeah, has options to find a stock. Oh he, I thought he was going to go for the pivot grab. Right in there. Oh, okay, the second one. Gotta watch out for that second arm. And the up Another air does it again. Is crazy. The, the game three pop off. Yeah. The game. You can tell he's stressing, man. You can tell he's stressing. And honestly, a couple of panic options coming out from base mage on that last arm. We saw the double roll in and multiple rolls in to get past the first arm, right. punished by the second arm coming through. And I, I know for a fact that that is something base mage is aware of, but getting a little caught in the moment, a little panicky, trying to get behind Dormigi. Dormigi looks calm and collected, mm -hmm. other than that little scramble situation where he was very obviously just running away. Yeah, I mean, he wanted some space. That's what Mimin wants here. They obviously try to keep you as far away as possible. But I do think that uh, 
he is playing a very good job of keeping this wall up and also staying away from what was dangerous in that first game. I really haven't seen him get grabbed too often uh, in the later half of the set. No, and we really haven't seen the edge guards come through. We, uh -oh. Like, we've seen a couple at, you know, like yep. 90, but as I say so, this should be the stock at about 40%. And honestly, the arm helping Phase Mage get back a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I like what he's what? trying to do. Jeez. What? Okay. Hard reads. You know, he has been doing a lot of defensive options. Uh, if not rolling on spot dodgers coming out to you, that was an air dodge back down to the ground. Okay. Nice neutral air spin. Uh, he is finding the hits every time. These neutral airs, these, these aerial combos coming out from, our uh, aerial three pieces really coming out from Dormigo. Oh no. Nice air dodge read. Uh -oh. Catching the air dodge once again. And that should be the stock. But no, the Nair again. Even his jump. Jumping and advancing so good against Base Mage. Catching him off guard in these situations. Out of there again, yeah. Oh my God. Jeez, the biggest megawatt right there. 103 immediately. If base mage not landing in the right spot, I think Dormigi might end up taking this. Might be the, one, the first person to move into our top eight. What is what does a matchup mean to a hard read? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like if you if you have two stocks just on hard megawatt spot dodge callouts, you don't need a good matchup. <laughs> you just need to make sure that you find those Dormigi looking so strong, looking to have a hold on base making mm -hmm. defensive options, and these air dodges getting caught every single time. The up match secures it, and Dormigi, your first player to secure their spot in the winner side of top eight, a matchup that we handled it as terrible coming into this. Divide almost with ease after that first game. Dormigi looks confident. Yeah, that was, you know what? I, I'm sure there was probably a little bit of nerves. As you said, base man said this, he felt like he was supposed to win. He's supposed to be in the top eight, but that does get to you, man. You know, you start to second guess yourself, really. Uh, but yeah, no, you lost a 9-1 matchup. That's rough. Anyway, yeah, wow, that's crazy. You that could be me. You, you are the one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I think harping, not to harp on the matchup too, too much, but I think that speaks to how much preparation and comfortability Dormiki has in situations like these where he is down, where he is unfavored. It looked like he had a plan to deal with base mage, and mm -hmm. honestly, I, I really think it came down to a lot of those big reads. Yeah, right? you know, he had some huge, I mean, like megawatt kills at exactly 100. I mean, you know, it's, it's uh, Jig, so she's supposed to, you know, kind of lose that stock early, but it does... It still took him a little bit of time to find some of the stocks early. It was like 150 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So getting stocks right at 100 after the hit is kind of, that's that's amazing. Yeah, it's a good spot to be in. Honestly, we saw a couple edge guards uh, in game one, you know, before that 60% mark, and then once in the in the final game before that 60% mark. But when you're in playing Min Min Puff and you die in four games only three times before 60 to an edge guard, you, you've done something miraculous. Like, yeah. it's so genuinely you have done something insane. What we got coming up next? Let's see. Oh, we look at some of these replays out the way real quick. Base Mage. That first game, yeah, absolute domination. Still a nice little comeback from Doramigi. Yeah. But, uh, I think that's kind of what really changed the things because I feel like he had to kind of get used to what Base Mage was about to bring to the table. Some of these other games were close, but he did end up taking that 3-1. Ooh, pop off. <laughs> okay. Happy about that one. And honestly... Another thing that we noticed was how strong Dory Migi was at throwing out these arms in the air and actually getting full conversions off of base mage just jumping around. And we saw in the latter two games, it forced a lot of strange air dodges out of base mage where he was air dodging in like the upper corners of the screen and getting hard punished on the way down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was, I mean, I just am still very surprised. Also, just great like awareness to know when he's able to get up there. Kind of shark. The jigs, like he's mm -hmm. he's putting a lot of pressure out there with uh, the neutral airs, with the fact that he's like hitting these very long distance, especially with the uh, up beyond the ground into like <laughs> a forward air. He was doing a lot of that. So after a while, obviously base mage is trying to go way higher so he can just kind of come down on the stage, and after that he would just run up and hit a uh, up air. Oh, and you can see base mage really, really wanted this one. Some very visible reactions and a smile and head in hands after that set was lost. Base mage. Oh, it's hard to feel like maybe you let, did let that one go a little bit. Yeah, you still got a chance, obviously, you know, to make it on the loose side of things. But, yeah, no no picture for Dormigi. He's just that good. He's a ghost. <laughs> it was a figment of our mag imagination. <laughs> so, oh. The ghost of Min Min? Like? Yeah, the ghost of Min Min passed right here. So, uh, I think up next, I see Hurt sitting on the stage. Oh, we're actually going to have a uh, full of art, straight up yeah, Japanese uh, battle Hurt, right here. Hurt versus Torigiri. Yeah. Hurt, I, I said it a little bit at the start of the broadcast, but I think Hurt was the player I was most impressed with yesterday. Coming in, he had a couple matchups. He had Ike and Ness, which are two, like, 
characters lower on the tier list that can give Snake a hard time. Mm -hmm. And he had a really, really deliberate game plan for both of those characters. It almost looked like an entirely different player played both of those matchups. If you didn't see it, Hurt beat Syrup without grenades. Ooh. Like, okay. Just, just genuinely without grenades. Um, it, it was pretty miraculous to see. And then I'm I'm sure everyone here saw Tori Gary play against Leo, yeah. MK Leo yesterday. I, I think the only the only word I could use to describe that game was just whimsy. Oh. Just just whimsy on the screen. As, I, I as, think that's one of those things you have to do as hurt though when you're playing against somebody who has a good reflector or a good absorb. Like you do have to learn. How, like that's one of that's when you know that snake is like a really good snake. When yeah. they also can just play CQC as well because obviously mm -hmm. snake is known for being able to zone very well, keep a lot of like residual damage out just because explosions. But once you learn how to fight with snake too, yeah, mm -hmm. you're going. Yeah, well, I mean like. Snake gets called. Snake mains get called carried for having grenades. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're the snake main that wins without it, yeah, you might you might be that guy now. That We're gonna be going grenade for grenade on this one though. <laughs> gonna be kind of interesting, you know, I, like to see how this uh, matchup plays out. I do like, you know, I've seen some cool setups here from uh, Tor Migi or Tori Giri, uh because of the fact that he's able to, you know, do the Briggle Blast setups. I always love yeah. that setup. But clearly he's gonna have some great uh, tricks with the grenade as well. So will Snake, but he has two of them, so. Yeah, yeah, and I know these two, I believe, I was told on good good information that these two have played before and that nice. Hurt came out three to one the last time that okay. they played. So there's at least a little bit of familiarity with what Banjo is capable of. I think some of the setups we saw yesterday, yeah, with the Briegel Blast, you know, confirming into the Nair, confirming into the up tilt, mm -hmm. um, even the setting up the tech chase on the platform into the side B as kind of a checkmate scenario. I feel like if you're aware of the kind of pace and timing of that move, you can play around it a little bit better. Yeah. I think Banjo is definitely not a matchup that most people would uh, know, but I assume that like with him tearing it up over there in Japan, like wherever he does get to play a lot, probably knows a little bit more about it. Uh, I think if that was an American player up there, though, it might be Curtains. So, you know, <laughs> I it's, said GGs, yeah, yeah in, in, or in a player just in general, because, yeah, we, we definitely do not have that type of representation over here. 